Uh, roll call. Wendover. Present. Bertles. Present. Engels. Present. Brown. Here. Dubrovic. Snyder. Okay. Uh, real quick, uh, Marcus asked me uh, this morning, um, just um, specifically to until we decide uh, who's going to be the officers, uh, which we're going to discuss. Uh, basically, he asked that somebody make a motion for us to have a chairperson for tonight's meeting, basically tonight's meeting. Um, so, you know, my suggestion is because of Jill as, you know, a vice chair, uh, he did ask we do it. If someone could, like, make a motion that Jill be the chair of this meeting, if that's okay with you folks, and she can, if nothing else, lead us through the agenda. Awesome. So moved. <laughs> Report. Okay. Oops. Bear with me a second here. We don't have these names in order, by the way, just so you know. Dubrovic. Here. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> this would be a yes or no on this one. Oh, what are we doing? I'm sorry. To no, that's, that's it's okay. <laughs> we'll put it as a yes. <laughs> okay. Wendover. Wendover. Yes. Engels. Yes. Brown. Yes. Fertile. Yes. Snyder. Would you lead us through the rest of the agenda now, please? <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I say yes. <laughs> <laughs> the agenda uh, for today, the approval of the agenda for tonight's meeting. Do we have a, has everyone we put it over? We would add one item, and that's why I put a, from the agenda that I emailed everyone, uh, I added one item that the I highlighted addition. in yellow. Yep. So, um, yeah. Good. So that would okay. be the good. agenda. So Including yeah. under old business, item C. Yes. Do we have a, a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. A second. Okay. Dubrovic. Yes. Brown? Yes. Engels? Yes. Wendover? Yes. Bertels? Yes. Snyder? Uh, public comments. I don't see any public here, so we'll move on to the November 9, 2015 meeting minutes. I'd like to make a couple of, um, and thank you, Mike, for uh, grabbing this again. No problem. Uh, I'd like to make a couple of uh, suggestions. I don't know what I would call them corrections. We should at least uh, strike the word being under the new business part. Somehow we need to, in all honesty and transparency, indicate that the work at Kirkland Terrace had been finished before it came to us. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, since we... Uh, I think we should do this in fairness, since we have procedures whereby we could even find someone for not coming to us on time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, strike, strike the word being then. I think there? that would be okay, or or maybe somehow make it stronger of adding the date of when it occurred. Just for transparency, so that no one can accuse us of, and, and I think, Pat, in, a, in all honesty, uh, to, to you bringing it to us, and thank you, um, we don't want anyone to, to suggest that there was any kind of, you know, collusion or something inappropriate going on here. You can add a chastising here if you want. It. No, no, no. <laughs> Ed, instead of a specific date, if the end of that first sentence I just added uh, were replaced with fiberglass clad windows prior to this meeting? Yes. Okay. Could we also somehow um, 
where it says uh, in the next paragraph, Bertels is owner of PKB Architect. Could we say uh, stepping down as a member of the commission or something, just to indicate that you know that again the arm's length going on. Appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Other, okay. than that, other than that, I have no. With those two changes? I would like, uh, Pat, how many windows were replaced exactly? Do you know? I thought you said like 77 or something. Oh, no, it's mm. like 300 and something. Yeah. Okay, we'll leave that out then. So if it's a big number. You yeah, know, I'm not going to count them. Okay. Um, what I'm going to just word it is Bertle stepped down to explain the work application. Does that sound fine? That's what? Because it's the application, it's not the staff report. And I think it says I refrain from, abstain from voting. And I think that should be clear too. If I didn't step back up and six. Right, okay. okay. <laughs> that's, if, if it's all right with you folks, that's how I'm going to phrase it is uh, Bertle stepped down to explain the work application, um, which is, of course, the application that he personally submitted which is different from the staff report. Mm -hmm. that Are you good with this, Ed? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. okay. All right. With those two changes, do we want to say it again or just throw out a motion? Or no, a motion. Okay. We know what the changes are. Okay. I've read them to you. Okay. And uh, we just need a motion. A motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a... I move we approve the minutes with those changes. Okay. Second. The vote. Brown. Yes. Engels. Yes. Bertels. Yes. Dubrovic. Yes. Wendover. Yes. Snyder. Thank you. Okay, we have no public hearings, so we're going to move on to new business and election of officers. We have a problem. We need a chair. We have a great one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would just as soon stay vice chair. Um, so. Mark, in discussion with me today, um, did let me know that he would be more than happy to continue as secretary. Um, but due to... Uh, but not chair. Well, yeah. And he's, he's doing a lot of uh, things to help his parents right now. And it's very time consuming. So amongst the remaining group, um, feel free to discuss it amongst all of you, actually. Yeah, let's just throw it out there. I mean, first of all, would anyone volunteer for it on our panel? I mean, does anybody want to volunteer for it? If not, I will volunteer somebody. Edward could make an awesome chairman. Hmm? Ed, Ed, Ed an awesome I agree. German. I agree. <clears throat> um, thank you. I just want you all to know that it is likely at some point this summer our house will go up for sale. Um, as we are going through some uh, changes in our lives. Uh, what that means, I, <laughs> in terms of a timetable, I can't tell you. But Would you be willing to serve until the time comes that you would move? Under duress. Well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you would. That's a yes. <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay. Well, we know who is willing to serve as vice chair. And Mark's and agreed to stay on as secretary. And Mark has agreed to stay on as the other. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm going to suggest, and I had actually forgotten Gwen, uh, I left you a voicemail. Um, okay. You need to be sworn in by the city clerk. You've, you're, right. you've been picked for counsel, so I guess I would uh, ask that you not be the one to make the motion, because that is fair. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, we have a majority here, so we've got a quorum. We can vote. You're, obviously, you're more than welcome to participate in the discussion. But does, does that make sense? She I was. Think. Wasn't she approved wasn't previously? I, she was, she's been approved, but you actually have the thing where you, to the city clerk, swear to... Oh, I guess I wondered why I wasn't doing that last time I came in. <laughs> Aren't they doing the spring and things yeah, separate process? We should have caught that. We should have caught that as staff. That's okay. We should have well, that. That's, yeah. So where's the motion need to be? Basically, the motion would be that uh, Ed Wendover uh, take over as chairperson. And it would actually be for 2016 mm -hmm. only. We would just, I think, leave it at that. And then if... Ed situation changes, we will deal with it. And then Jill as vice chairperson and Mark as secretary. Oh. So the motion would be Ed as oh, chair. And that has to go to the commission, is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. No, no. no we just could we vote on it tonight. Yeah, we we have a quorum without it. Gwen can't can do it. I, I, yeah, because I haven't been sworn should not be the one to make oh, the oh, motion. Oh, yeah, I was getting the two together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a blanket <laughs> vote. It's all three in one vote. Oh, yeah, we've got a quorum. We're good. But it's all no, three officers? All, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do we have a motion that... So moved. Three. Okay. One and two. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Do we need to vote on it? Yes, yes we do. We will. Okay. We're all going to say yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> Unanimously. Brown. Yes. Engel. Yes. Bertles. <laughs> yes. Dubrovic. Yes. Can Wendover. Yes. I keep asking you to vote. <laughs> actually, well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a note in there. We have a quorum, unanimous, unanimous amongst the people who. I will I'm just reading support. down a list, by the way. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm doing that. So, uh, Jill, thank you for your enthusiasm on the vote. Oh, you're this very is, welcome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Next, please. Okay, uh, the draft of the annual report. Not sure if anyone has had a chance to review it, but we have to re review the draft. Do we vote on this? Yes, technically. Okay. Technically, yeah, any of the, again, any of the four of you can make a motion. Okay. Do we have a motion for the annual report? What are we making a motion for? The uh, annual report. Approved. It's it's a it's in a draft, but if we approve it, then it becomes then it, will it be becomes out. not a draft. Exactly. exactly. You just approve it. Yeah. Right. So we need a motion. I move, I move to approve it. Support. Vote. Bertles. Yes. Brown. Yes. Engels. Yes. Dubrovic. Yes. Wendover. Yes. Thank you. And just because you're the newer one of the group, um, when this is done, um, basically the middle part of it where I describe the, uh, you know, the various work applications for the year, that's new. Mm -hmm. But essentially the first three or four pages is pretty much just copy and paste from the previous year because it describes in detail the district. Right. Um, I mix up the pictures every year to do them a little different. I try to put pictures of the uh, buildings that we had work applications for. So if you notice, that's there. And of course, uh, uh, we took a picture with our cake and the group of us. I thought that was, uh, wanted to do that, uh, you know, because we obviously, uh, lost a very, very knowledgeable person, to say the least. So, thank you. Okay, moving on to old business. Um, Cobbs and Mitchell building. Um, the no staff update, what does that mean, Mike? Well, actually, uh, I was not aware of anything new except the city attorney uh, sent me a very short little blurb via email and basically 
um, the city attorney for the city of Cadillac is going to be uh, now filing a motion, I, I believe, this week. And the motion is to ask the court to stipulate an order for sale of the property. So that obviously will be available for any of you to read um, after it is, I would assume, filed with the court. But um, that was basically it. Uh, we're filing a motion to stipulate for an order for sale of the building. What would be the time frame on that? I heard. Um, the court will set the date. It goes to circuit court. So the court will set the date. Um, clearly, sooner is better. Um, I honestly personally don't know um, what the law would stipulate on something like that with the back taxes and everything. I, I'm not, obviously there would have to be uh, public notices, et cetera, you know. Okay. Um, Ed, do you have anything to add to I was going to say, Ed, what the, the uh, city council, uh, apparently there's going to be some discussion of this at the next city council meeting um, behind closed doors. It'll be another closed session? Because okay. there are still some stipulations that need to be there. For example, the, the mechanics of how it's being done may or may not uh, waive the $30,000 in back taxes, especially for the other units of government. And that's part of the sticky wicket here. You know, they're all faced with budget, the school district, the county, everybody's mm -hmm. faced with budget things, and they don't want to give up that Michelake owes them these taxes, yet they realize nothing is moving forward. So, And what are the odds that those taxes will ever be paid anyway unless... There's, I mean, they're sued for it. Personally, you're asking me personally what the odds are? About as good as that uh, snowbank outside, uh, yeah. you know, melting yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I have a question. They're filing a motion to stipulate an order to sale, for sale of this building. Well, the building is already for sale, so what exactly do they mean, a stipulation to uh, put a place an order for sale of the building? The Meaning it's under city seated ownership. back, okay, so that it's seated back to the city, and then the city is putting up for sale, correct? And that's part of that whole thing of how that's done technically, mm -hmm. my understanding. Mm -hmm. I'm not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I've got <laughs> okay. um, mm -hmm. part of that sticky wicket is how this is done uh, is largely because of the tax implications. Okay. And then the procedures of how the city goes through that, advertising it, etc., is something that the city attorney and the council will have to work out. Okay. So when they say this order for sale of the building, that there's a part of that is that there would be, because the, the building is not yet in the hands of the city, right? right. Mm -hmm. It may right. be foreclosed upon or whatnot, right. but it's not. Right. So this there's a step in there where it becomes officially city property, then it's put up for sale, correct? What had what it happened Since is when the judge ruled in favor of the foreclosure, there is a redemption period by law that every taxpayer gets. Mm -hmm. So that was appropriate. But that had not kicked in until all these negotiations happened. So okay. it looks like they're about to give up ownership. Okay. Is that? Well, I have not been in the closed door sessions, but I believe your understanding of it, just based on what I heard, is a lot better than mine. So I, that, I mean, I, you haven't said anything that I would disagree with. But it's still up in the air for a year after whatever the redemption time is. Um, yes, there is another item related to that, though, if I could speak to it. Yes. The uh, test, the Cobbs and Mitchell Task Force and the Chamber of Commerce uh, has been together with the city administration uh, looking to the future of Cobbs and Mitchell. And we have scheduled for February 16th at 3 o'clock a visioning meeting of the task force and now a couple of other invited 
people. And I'd like to say that it's not um, being advertised as a public meeting yet. In fact, the upshot of this is we believe we will be holding a planning charrette in the future. Uh, I think that's where the, what will come of this meeting. Uh, and it's not going to just include Cobbs and Mitchell, but rather the property across the street, across Chapin, the vacant uh, shopping center site. So what we're doing now is calling this the South Mitchell Street Visioning, but the Cobbs and Mitchell <coughs> a building is uh, was sort of the instigator to this. And I was uh, planning to attend that, and you okay, should you. too, if you can, there. Jill. Yeah. Um, Where is it going to be? Well, that's going to be at, at City Hall. Uh, that's not the big public meeting. I, right. When we do the big public meeting, we will make quite an announcement, have plenty of time to post it, uh, because there are a number of uh, stakeholders uh, downtown who express an interest, for example, Greg at Brinks, um, now we're hoping that uh, Baker College may get interested. Um, so it's, it seems like these things take forever to get moving, but it, it is moving in a positive way. Great. Thanks, Ed. That meeting's at 6 p.m., did you say? It is at 3 p.m., oh. February 16th. That, may, that time may be hard for me, but... You know, the city manager is, uh, and the uh, chamber president are uh, in charge of that meeting. Uh, MedWorks Northwest is going to be the facilitator, we think, for planning charrette. So we've got the regional planning people interested now. So where is this? Here on city property? I mean, here at the city building? It's at meeting. City Hall. The okay, meeting. City Hall. Okay. This is not a public meeting? Is it um, a restriction against us? You know, we need well, concerned about the, the reason we may not uh, appropriately have more than a majority of us there right. is it may create a public meeting under the Michigan law that is not necessary at this stage. Okay. When we get to the point of holding the planning charrette, uh, there is discussion of that being a public meeting uh, posted as such so that anyone having an interest could okay. attend. Okay. Um, I will say at 3 o'clock that day I can't go. So if someone wants to go in my place... What day of the week is that? that that's fine. That's the day of the week, right? It's a, right. And I, it's I, a Tuesday. And, um... Right, that's the day after President's Day, isn't it? The, yeah. I would say... Yes, it's a Tuesday. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. Because the 15th is Monday, and I know that I can't okay. go at 3 o'clock. So if one of... The, if anyone... I, I think it might be appropriate for someone else to go in my place. Do you, or...? Uh, it, it, this one, I don't think it's critical. I think at the next... Or at the big meeting, the planning charrette, as many of this group as can be there, okay. since the Cobb and Mitchell building is really under our jurisdiction, and we have taken uh, somewhat of a lead in, in trying to get it off the dime, uh, I would say that would be the one where all of us could be at would be good. Okay. Okay. doke Thank you, Ed. Were either of you looking at that time frame as a viable time that you could be there or were interested in going to that? I know I can. I got work. That's the 16th. Yeah, mm -hmm. Tuesdays are not a good day for me. Okay. Oh. So I have to look at the calendar, but usually Tuesdays are a good day for me, so I could come and be there Great. in the audience. So. Uh, the CLG. Yes. The draft is complete. It is just a draft. Would you like to update us, Mike? Well, the document that all of you have, and the reason it's, you know, it's obviously a draft before it'll be completely finalized, is the sections of it that are shaded 
are nothing more than the requirement from the guidelines from the State Historic Preservation Organization. And so those are the gray shaded areas, which is essentially the question or the item that's addressed below it. A number of these were able to be addressed just from the City Code of Ordinances, Chapter 12, under Historic Districts. And in cases where it could be addressed from that, all I did was copy and paste it, and I italicized it, and that way, um, you know, those were, I mean, I had to find them, copy, paste, but, you know, I didn't have to make up any verbiage of my own. Uh, Nan uh, submitted a one-page uh, letter that addressed some key issues specifically in basic requirement number three because number three and number five really lead into uh, the meat of what's expected, the amount of work that this may entail. Um, you don't have to do it prior to this, but it involves goals for the future. And uh, basically what I did is uh, right on the very first page, uh, I took a paragraph, quoted it from Nan, and it basically described our district and uh, some of its historic boundaries in a general way. Uh, but essentially, as you go through it, uh, it's questions uh, that are within the uh, application booklet. The application booklet was, I think, 15 pages. So it's addressing those, answering those questions, and particularly when you look at page one, two, um, three, these are really just copy and paste from the uh, city ordinance. You know, they, they want definitions. Well, we have definitions. Um, obviously, I copy and pasted the specifics of the historic district boundaries, uh, those things. And that is basically um, what all is in the, uh, trying to see if that's all still under the first uh, guideline or basic requirement. Those are the things that are uh, in the basic requirements, one and two, uh, predominantly a lot of copy and paste. When you get to page eight, then all of a sudden uh, I'm uh, answering questions such as uh, appointing uh, people to serve on a committee and we basically refer to the application on page eight that we use for volunteers of all boards and commissions. We, we have that. Um, in reference to, um, uh, I make reference that we will consult professionals in other specific fields when need be, uh, such as if we get into something that, lo and behold, in the future is an archeological site you know, we would seek out professional consultants. Um, a lot of that, just we've advertised. Um, again, page nine, when we get into basic requirement three, uh, they ask questions about inventory and surveying. And that's where Nan specifically talked about uh, doing some inventory and research uh, of an expanded area. Uh, rather than the current historic district. And that in turn leads to the end. Uh, uh, I'm going to get the, the requirement for, but that's where it kind of gets into the end, which is the goals. And, you know, how this commission, if they seek to pursue this certified local government certification, you know, the goals that are going to have to be worked on over the next five years. Uh, these aren't things that need to be done in six months. They don't even need to be done in a year because um, as when you read it, these are lofty goals. I, I believe they're lofty goals. And um, so we have that uh, basic requirement um, number four. Uh, they talk about things, uh, public participation. Uh, well, we do that through open meeting acts. 
and uh, things of that nature. Um, we have, uh, we, we do uh, public notice prior to special meetings. So these are all things that have to do with, part of it is this, part of it's the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act, uh, which is, you know, requiring, uh, you know, public hearings, public notices, um, just so that the public has an opportunity to participate. Um, when we get into, uh, they ask questions about minutes. All of our minutes, uh, those things are available on the city website. Uh, these things are available to the public. Um, this historic district ordinance, this is all on the city website if people choose to read it. Um, but my opinion is the real thing that this group needs to understand and look at and decide going forward. I mean, you can apply for this and not necessarily have really dug into uh, the fifth requirement. But the fifth requirement, which starts on page um, 14, really gives some specifics as far as goals that the group is looking to achieve. And quite frankly, those goals were taken from Nan's summary of uh, that she gave us back in uh, early November. It's nothing that has to be decided on today. It can be tabled. Uh, I mean, we can go forward with this at any time, but the draft is available, and I would sure suggest everybody understand it, what's, what's involved. Do we vote on the draft? Yes, because then what occurs is the draft would then be, um, you would then recommend that, I would assume council would then have to approve it before we actually submitted it to the state of Michigan or to SHPO. But uh, just like our planning commission, they make recommendations to council. Um, you would make a recommendation to council. Um, but, it, but as I said, just, you know, the devil is in the details, so just, I, I just would hope everybody understands it. And I don't have it in front of me. Was that set out in last month's packet? Yes. Okay. I've got extras here if you want one. Okay. I can bring it to you right now, but it's, it's a 15-page document. After the meeting. Okay, okay, so. I'm not sure what their packet is, so. Does anyone have anything to add to the CLG draft? Please ask. <clears throat> just, uh, I have a, I guess an observation, and we were, we just get done talking about the Cobbs and Mitchell building, but in fact it's not in the district? No. No, it's, it's in its own little district. <laughs> no, it's not shown properly on the maps that are. I there. need to include that. Okay. Yeah. I need to include that. Mike and, Mike and I have talked about that. Uh, yep. And uh, to that end, so that would be page 16 uh, would need to have the Cobbs and Mitchell uh, building shown or the red outline, Mike. Page 6, you mean? 16, the map. The CLG is only 15 pages. Well, the, this following, in our two, following in our two maps attached. Oh, 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 I see what you're And they are yeah. not, yeah. the, the, the top of Mitchell's Mitchell. not shown on either of those maps yeah, properly. Uh, you're right. And in right. fact, <coughs> uh, the historic central business district potential the Cobbs and Mitchell building is included in that already. So it need, that potential district needs to be carved out mm -hmm. around where the Cobbs and Mitchell building is. Okay. And then there's one other map where that change. I think that was where I was thinking of page five or six. On page five, if the map came down further, 
you've got the definition of Cobbs and Mitchell, but if a map came down further, right. it would also show Cobbs and Mitchell on that. Right. Uh, the Cobbs and Mitchell uh, has its own separate map, so what I will do uh, is I will actually put that immediately, its own separate map, immediately under the description of the Cobbs and Mitchell. It, it, but, yeah. It could be the same. It's only a block down from what the map shows. It, I, I don't think it'd be difficult to do it as just extending that map. But no, Pat, you, you're right. That was that was the thing that caught my eye when I first went through this. And, and then further, you talked about the shopping center site. Is that going to be then added? Oh, that's down the road. Yeah, that's that's, future. that's way down the road. No. Um, and probably right now uh, the city council would not want us to be tinkering with that as they're trying to get get it finally moving and off the dime. Um, that's just proposed discussion for down the road. So that, right, what it is, yeah. right. Read how to develop it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Somebody said, yeah, let's go, but we should. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. declaring that in the historic mm -hmm. district right now would probably not be a help. Right. However, that's exactly why they put Kirtland Terrace in the historic district, because it was such an eyesore to begin with, and there was this beautiful old building, this old school that was ripped down, and that put up in its place, I don't know when, before I came to town, but mm -hmm. 80s time or 70s or something. Se 60s. But that's 60s. why they included it specifically in the historic district, so that we would have some say to at least keep it a little contained as far as what happened there, being making it worse, you know what I mean, kind of within the district. Of course, it's a big problem. I think building. you brought up, or was it you or Mike, one of you brought up that the uh, Senior Citizens Center is about to become historic, right? Which we're, we're about, about to hit 50 years with that. You were saying Kirtland. Kirtland, yeah. Over 60s, yeah. 60s, yeah. late, late 60s. Mm -hmm. And have its own historic yeah, it's own <laughs> well, it's like the old Don't Michigan Bell yeah. building's going to be historic soon, if not already. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. But I anyway, there I there is thought. potentially okay. that may not be a negative, actually, for that to be in there, just in the, from the perspective that whatever development goes on there at least would have some semblance of a... Um, should have to have either passing before this committee mm -hmm. or some other entity have some sense of cohesion with the historic nature of the downtown. It's like in Traverse, they you know have brand new parking garages, whatever, and they don't obviously don't look historic, but they look a lot closer to some of the historic styles, even though they're built new, than um, some things that otherwise could have been thrown up. You know, so I know they're quite picky there about what they allow, even though they're it's a new build thrown in with the historic. So. Um, I don't know. It might complicate it, but it might not end up being problematic or possibly helpful. Okay, so what do we do with this draft, then? Do we continue to review it and get acquainted with it and educated on it? And I would suggest everybody just read it, you know, particularly the stuff that is not copy and paste, you know, the stuff that's not italicized. Um, because the stuff, again, the stuff that's italicized, copy and paste, it, you know, it has to do with questions uh, that are specifically in our ordinance already. Um, but, you know, particularly, uh, I would say, um, basic requirement three, uh, basic requirement five, those are ones that I, I would sure, you know, suggest everybody be acquainted with. Well, should we take the time to do that as a group? I mean, so well, we go down that, through That's the if question. If you want to have a work session, you may. Yeah. Set a work session. Why don't we, before the next meeting, or begin the next meeting, with a work session to go over this, mm -hmm. with the idea that if we could come to agreement, we would approve it at the next meeting. That sounds like a good plan. Mm -hmm. what, one of the things is I reread this, and I, I got a hold of Dan to clarify some things, is I was rereading this for this meeting. 
Um, I didn't see any substantive changes, Mike, from the way you did it. With the at first, I was not clear of how you had done it, but after mm -hmm. going over with Dan, I I now think that if you were to remove the distinction of what Nan had suggested to us and make that as a part of the document. I I wouldn't make too many changes other than those map clarifications mm -hmm. um, to get this process started. You know, we have to get the city council to approve it and then SHIPA will have to approve right. it. So we really are only just getting the ball going by doing this and and we're taking the lead to do it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, as our new chair, do you want to send out an email with a date of when might be a good uh, workshop? Yes. You we'll, said, uh, you Mike, said you Mike, do and it I before the next meeting. Would that, the would that work? We could start the meeting at five. Start the meeting at five. And I'll, and I'll just post a notice on the door, it's got to be at least like 18 hours in advance, that there will be a workshop preceding the meeting. Mm -hmm. Preceding. Preceding. Yes. Does that <coughs> sound okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Very good. Is that okay, Pat? I think it's fine. So we'll start at five, but that'll be... Good. Part of the That'll be what we do. We'll put a table up here and we'll sit around a table and... Okay. I'll make multiple copies of it so we can cross things out and whatever we might need. Good. Okay. Everyone clear on that? We can move on? Mm -hmm. Okay, Gwen, you have an update on the brick pavers. Sure. I'll just tell you what I know about them. Um, I spoke with Ken Payne. This is probably, we had no meeting a month ago or whatever and all that. So this is probably a couple months ago when I spoke with him, two, three months ago. So um, I talked to him. He was quite a jolly fellow and willing to work with us on the pavers. And, you know, it's all budget, budget, right, for the city. So basically what he, um, I can't remember who he kibbutzed with, but he talked with one or two other folks. And um, we did walk around the streets and that kind of thing and um, to look at the condition of things. And what he essentially got approved, and it's really up to him, he says. It doesn't have to, like, go through multiple other layers of approval. But they would be willing to pay for... Um, <clears throat> cement to use between the bricks and they would be willing to um, obviously offer up the bricks that have already been salvaged that are sitting over here in the city garage some of which are sorted and a bunch of which are not sorted but the labor part of it that was sort of up in the air and not promised so he didn't say that they couldn't pay that down the road but that they would pay for cement at, so, you know, and we talked about potentially starting do one street and let it, you know, work on what, it'd be great to get it all done at once. If we could do it all at once, wonderful. But if we couldn't, and depending on what we had resources for, um, whether it be bricks, whether it's cement, labor, yada, yada, um, to pick a section of the street and, you know, one end or the other, um, to do one, you know, possibly in the spring, hopefully, that would be wonderful if we could get that going. But the, And he said, well, yeah, if you guys can come up with, you know, volunteers. Now I'm like, okay, volunteers sound nice, but you have liability issues because this is city property. Of course, the streets belong to the public, too. So you would think, okay, citizens should be able to participate. But I'm sure they have their legal ways of handling that. But he said they are open to volunteers participating. Um, and I did talk to um, <clears throat> Brad Van Buren. don't know if any of you all know him, but he's over at the, um, he does building trades at the CTC. And he is their applied construction technology person. He's actually quite interested in pavers himself from where he has had experience in the past. However, his job is as uh, instructor over the students there building a house. So they'll take a house, they'll build it. That's like their semester or their year-long, I think it's a year-long project. So they're going much slower than a normal home build so that they can teach along the way these parts of the trade. But, of course, I'm trying to encourage them that, you know, you're working on um, homes and streets, and this is obviously infrastructure of any community, whether it's old pavers or new pavers. So good to know about pavers, you know. So anyway, he said the only thing is that they um, are currently doing a house. They're already behind 
<laughs> you know, and this was a couple months ago when I'm talking to him. So he wasn't sure if they could anticipate really having any of these students to come out and work for, but I said, don't they need volunteer hours? Which, yes, they do, but, you know, he maybe can't necessarily commit a certain number of students for that. So we may or may not have some, because I said, you know, it doesn't matter if it's not their project, if they, they are required some volunteer hours. After hours is when you do your, your volunteer mm -hmm. hours. So I don't care when they do the streets. I can do them at midnight for all I care, as long as the neighbors are okay with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but to get it done. So anyway, I don't know if we'll really have a resource there or not, because last I spoke with him when he had talked to a couple people up the chain of command, so to speak, over of his bosses there, they were not very um, encouraging as far as um, committing to promising that labor. So I don't know if any of you have connections to anyone over there and that um, applied construction technology department and that kind of thing. But that would be great if we all, you know, if we started working from other directions on how to plant the seed, because it may take us longer than just this spring, just because of people wrapping their brain around it, you know, of like, oh, this really needs to be done and we're actually going to do it, you know. So as far as volunteers, people at the Historical Society, I did mention it to them as well. They did say um, one is connected strongly with the JCs, and they do have JCs are younger group of professionals. So they did say that they had quite a few JCs that were willing to help as volunteers. So you're really looking at um, coming down to, okay, someone, you still have to have a professional contractor to handle this project and what you're doing and all that. So again, I don't know if the city would, they would at least have to give you a stamp of approval, you know, if not be the ones recommending who would be used. So, you know, I'm not sure on that yet still who we could use, but I also spoke to a gentleman named Jeff Sherman, and he's out of Kalamazoo, and this guy, for 20 years, that's all he does, is go around restoring, repairing, relaying into, some are just repair spots, and some are, um, are projects that are re relaying a whole entire historic street at Kalamazoo College, and for the city of Kalamazoo, so their government pays for this, their city. So that's his full-time job. So they have a whole um, kind of a template of cookbook of this is exactly what we do to replace bricks. And, you know, anyone that works with pavers, you talk a little bit about, oh, the sand, blah, 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 drainage, all these wonderful, happy things. Well, I think it's different on a street where you're going to have trucks driving and this kind of a thing. So because I was really surprised that you, were, we, you would be talking about cement between the bricks because when you see our old streets, some of them have cement between them. Some between them, some have been asphalted over, some have sand between them, you know, so you're like, what was it? <laughs> you know, worse that can, a little inconsistent, and maybe those were patch jobs over the years, I don't know, but what they do certainly involves a cement lay, but there's a specific mix and how they do it, and it's like a few layers, so these big thick pavers, as you, it's really the part that is, because um, I said, well, you have expansion and contraction of your bricks with the, I'm sorry, the cement, even if the bricks don't move as much as that cement is going to be moving and popping out, I would think that would give easier than the brick. I don't know, maybe, you know, Pat has more experience with that. But anyway, he said, no, actually, you'll end up maybe um, popping out the maybe top half inch. But he said the main part of it is that you want, like, the bottom third about to stay intact, basically so you aren't allowing the bricks to move. So, of course, you could go back and put sand or whatever in there. But it's a, you know, it's a whole process of what they do, but they've been very successful with it. And some places where they've laid new, he said for all their, like their um, fire station there was not historic, but new. And all of that was all cemented. So I know there's the controversy of cement versus not, but I think in a street application, it, it is looking like that's more where they're leaning. So he's kind of the expert, so to speak, that I've spoken to about all of that and what mix to use, what brands to use, proportionality all that good stuff. But, you know, you all might have other resources also to bring to the table as far as the process and all of that. And, you know, I'm sure the city would have to approve of anything actually done there. Right. But it's basically pulling those cement plugs out and <coughs> doing a cement foundation or footing further down lower, basically making, you know, up to whatever level you're going to lay the bricks in. So really you're redoing a cement plug but lower and then the bricks are just decorative on top of it. But, you know, you're hoping, of course, to get it wide enough that you stabilize the area so that you don't have heaving and shifting and all this. So, you know, all we could do is try, but labor is still a little bit of an issue. And, you know, he wasn't really committing labor, but yet I'm not really sure exactly where we're supposed to get the labor if you're, you know, you're going to need definitely a professional 
<laughs> group to do this, you know, you kind of even if you have volunteers. Materials of like, if you have to pull up some of the bricks, so do you have to have like special heavy du heavy duty construction materials to pull up the brick and? I'm sure you do. I mean, like as far as in there with the cement kind of thing, like no. Okay, yeah, well, that was not mentioned. No, I don't know. Okay, Nothing so saying we couldn't ask for, for more support there. Okay. You so know? Like you said, on top of having, like, the volunteers, maybe, mm -hmm. but having, like, a professional kind of leading the group. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you definitely would need some contractor yeah. or sub, whatever, whatever you want to look at it. Done right. Yeah, who would really be there overseeing things, even if they're, you do this, you do that, and pointing fingers at all volunteers. So, but, yeah, cutting out the, I know, um, why am I blank? Concrete sawing, Cadillac concrete sawing, Perrin. That's all he does is cut out cement. So mm -hmm. for him, he'd be there and 15 minutes later, you know, every the plug is out. You know, I mean, he could boom, boom, boom in an hour. The street, all those cement plugs would be removable, but now you have the labor of getting, what are you doing with them now? Somebody's got to get rid of all that stuff. So, right. you know, there are some resources here locally that I know could do parts of that, but... It's, we definitely still need someone to. So we have the the materials. We just have we'd have to get mm -hmm. the foreman and the volunteers. Correct. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't there be like a city waiver form? I know they have things for something. They like might, don't they? Like uh, you know, sometimes we work with the schools. Like when somebody's coming on a field trip or something, they can get a waiver form that's not from the school or something that's a, that the city might give out to the volunteers saying, you know what, you want to volunteer, great, but you're volunteering on your own. Mm -hmm, I see. Kind of yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they have something to address that, but, mm -hmm. but I don't know. So I don't know. Hopefully that would be great this spring, but um, if any of you have any resources, you know, just if you want to let me know or... Uh, just since I've already talked to him and I, he knows I'll be calling back in the mm -hmm. spring to see a little bit more about what we can do with that. But um, Well, thanks yeah. for taking the lead on yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Appreciate that. Thanks yeah. for following up. And yeah, and even just the, the politicking and talking and, you know, being reasonable. It's everyone's community, obviously. But we have a really nice downtown beautification project planned of a completely intact parking lot in the area that you know, you're going to be chewing up some parking and it'll look really nice, but it's like you've got streets in town that aren't repaired and right. you have potholes everywhere, not just these historic streets, but some of the others too. Right. It's like, okay, maybe that is more benefit to the town doing the downtown beautification, but um, there are certainly citizens in the town in some of these back streets that are, their streets are not taken care of, you know? So, um, and these historic streets, which are, which are our concern here on this committee, obviously you know, need a little TLC. So <coughs> hopefully we can um, work their their mindset a little more towards that end of, from the historic perspective, there's certainly a lot of value in fixing these streets beyond just the next street needing repair or replacement, <laughs> you know, in town. So that's it. Okay, great. Thanks, Gwen. Welcome. Um, tabled items, none. Moving on to the informational items. Um, recently, Nan emailed us about proposed legislation at the state level, um, House Bill HB 2532 and Senate Bill SB 720 um, that could highly impact our historic districts. Um, I understand it's out of committee. I don't know when they're, does anybody have any real detail on what the status is of it? Other than, you know, these are proposed bills, um, but you had heard it's out of committee then? I, I haven't gotten anything new. Um, what I, the one page, what I call summary that I sent to everyone, that was sent to me by Michigan State University, uh, MSU Extension. Um, they send me updates every Friday. Uh, it, usually it's a Friday on planning, zoning, things to be aware of. Uh, this, they did not send an update to this last Friday. Um, I don't think Marcus has gotten anything because obviously the Michigan Municipal League 
and others will be following it also. So. It would be nice to know when and if it's going to be voted on. Um, when and if. And it would be really nice to have our reps here to give us a... That's probably a lofty goal as well. <laughs> if Darwin or Phil could come and give us a... I, I don't know that they are that uh, up to speed on, I mean, the very numbers of the bill give you an idea, you know, 720. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's 720 bills so far. Right. Tubling in the Senate, so I mean. <laughs> well, at the very least, we could email them and ask for. Well, that was my thought. Ask for their. Um, mm -hmm. they, they would, I would think could, they would, somebody would. Could, could we ask or, Pat, who knows them both, to be our liaison to contact them and see where they're at, see what they think so far. Um, it might be appropriate for us at a future meeting sooner than later to take a position and to alert the city council as well because the city council this would get put in their lap too ultimately ultimately this group certainly um, as I've mentioned earlier kind of like with the Planning Commission you know you you have every right to make a recommendation Well, I think we would have the the right, possibly the responsibility, to weigh in ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we certainly ought to notify the council and um, possibly even get more involved in making a statement about it. Uh, it would see. Have, have you read the bill, Pat? I have not read it in its parody, No. Um, it, any any of you read the bill? I just I just I rely on Nan. She just sent us. She emailed me the synopsis. There's there's a couple parts of the bill that wouldn't it would change the appeal process, adding another step. I I, I wouldn't object to that on its own, you know, but the uh, provisions of the bill. A sunsetting the existing one without a two-thirds vote of the property owners and a majority vote in the whole city is ludicrous I mean we've been that. here we've done this we've mm -hmm. done our you know it's it, it, it's functioning we obviously have the footing that has been useful to the city in taking the, the lead on something like the Cobbs and Mitchell stuff I mean, this would be going back to square one. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I can't Apparently. understand uh, until I read the free press piece, I couldn't understand why someone was doing this. And it's a property rights um, effort, mm -hmm. um, which I think is perhaps a little overzealous. To say the least. To say the least. So it would behoove us, Pat, if you could find out and, and report back to us uh, sooner, I mean, maybe send us all an email, remembering again that all our emails as a group are public information. But I can't do it on my computer then I have to use a, I have to use a government computer? No. No. <laughs> 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 yes, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are you okay with that, Pat? Well, okay. I'll, I'll contact them, and uh, obviously it'll probably be email communications anyway, and yeah. so sure. we can just copy everybody. And, and uh, yeah. Michelle in Potvin's office has been, I found, I mean, very helpful. She responds within a day and tracks down where something is. She's very good. All right. No one has. Anything else on that? If any I commission? Any, if I get any updates, I'll forward it to you. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Any commissioner comments? Well, I could comment as a member of the public, if you will, <laughs> versus a commission. I'm not. I, it's nothing that would need a um, permit per se, but just so people are aware, we will be having work done on the Mitchell House soon coming up, um, roofing work. Mm. 
So if you see activity over there, you know, you wonder what's going on. You catching yeah. or um, No, with clay tile, it's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have to take it all off and redo all the other layment and put it back on. So, mm. yeah, look for a little area that's leaking in the carriage house, and there are some little tucks and, and uh, that kind of thing to, okay. to be done. So that was under so public comment? I suppose. I mean, I don't, you know, as far as a, um, just letting you guys know that'll be coming down the pipeline. FYI. Yeah. Okay. No other public? Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Any support? We're adjourned. Thank you, Nan. <laughs>